Hello, welcome to my uh, introduction to pin mixing and GPIO control on the Linux. Talk for the Embedded Linux Conference 2021. Uh, I would have preferred to be in person in Seattle, but it's not possible. So let's keep it virtual um, next, maybe next year. So first of all, we're going to start at a hardware level. Uh, to see what is a pin or a pad or what is a GPIO from an hardware point of view. So when you have your chip or your SOC, C7 chip, you can have multiple ways, uh, multiple package types. Uh, one common one is the QFP or equivalent to a QFN which are, has all the pin or pads on the sides um, and the other type of, of packages are the BGA ones where the pad or pins are in fact balls underneath the, uh, the package and um, there's two different ways of soldering the, the SOC so the BGA is much complex to solder the QFN can be done by hand, for example, but you won't find a high profile SOC in QFN pack QFP package. Uh, the really complex and high profile SOC are all in BGA because uh, you can have much more pins and uh, you can have them much more, much better, uh, um, a much better layout, layout uh, on the PCB but more complex to uh, to uh, design. So if you go further in the package, uh, you see the die, which is the part which is uh, actually produced uh, on wafers. So the die is uh, put on a plastic, uh, on plastic. Uh, some small um, wires are soldered and uh, connected to the external uh, pins, you see. And uh, afterwards, uh, the, the plastic package is uh, is uh, is um, closed on top. So, is globally how it's done inside. It's not always like that, but it's a good good example. So when now you see where are exactly the pads on the die. What in the hardware uh, design? What are what's in the hardware exactly? So it is a typical hardware design of a, a pad, uh, where you have the physical point where the small wires are connected. Uh, connected, it's internally it's connected to an, an analog IP, which is here here to um, to deal with all the analog parts. Like the voltage, the grounding, the pull-ups, pull-down, the tr trigger smith, and so on. And afterwards, you have the, all the digital parts. Uh, you have, for example, uh, the, a mux for the input of the output. For the input mux is not always here. Some SOCs connect the input to all the functions, for example. And for the output, there is always, always a mux with an output enable. So it is not the output so to say, for example, to put in input to an output. And typically, the GPIO, so the general purpose input output, is uh, is one generally one of the function. Sometimes when on one the, the default function or the fallback function, where, where no function has, uh, are selected. So the a GPIO is only a digital way to control the the pad. Uh, the voltage, uh, one, zero, input, etc. So in, in the analog part, you see uh, the typical uh, analog part of a pad. We call it a push-pull pad or CMOS pad. And we It's a three-state pad. So the three states are uh, the two, uh, one, and zero level, so one level is uh, driven to the pad voltage, so VCC or VCC IO. Uh, zero is driven to ground, 
and uh, there is a first state uh, called high impedance uh, when it's not dri driven by any, driven by anyone so no no component on the PCB actual uh, drive uh, nothing on the on the line um, this is why uh, the high high impedance has a special uh, drawing uh, to say it's between 0 and 1 but nobody knows what's the value in fact so this is a push pull pad where you can drive to 0 and to 1 okay um, for some special application for, for example y2c or uh, one wire you have some special pads could call open drain pads uh, they all can only drive to ground only to zero they cannot drive to one so it's either in input or in output but to ground so uh, when you see, see the drag uh, the diagram on uh, the, the diff so you can uh, you can manage to have uh, a one or zero on a bus but you need a pull up on the pcb and this pull up will actually pull uh, the the level to one when the soc is in input this is how i2c works in fact uh, none of the i2c components host or devices uh, never drive to one they only drive to zero uh, the reverse is the open source pad this one is really rarely used but it exists it's a reverse. Uh, the the SOC cannot drive to ground, but only to VCC. So it can be used in some specific uh, hardware, but it's rarely rarely used. So, like I said, the analog pad, analog pad hardware, uh, has uh, optional uh, components like uh, pull up. Uh, they uh, they can add uh, small resistors on all pads to 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 add a pull up or a pull down to ground or to VCC. You can select uh, the drive strength, for example, to uh, to select uh, so some uh, buses need different drive strengths or some buses only require a, a, a lower drive strength so you, you can uh, lower your consumption and other, uh, other possibly, uh, possible uh, analog uh, stuff. So, the functions. Okay, so uh, the input and the output can be, can be uh, mixed to a function. So um, usually, you have uh, an indiv individual uh, selection by, by pad. So each pad has a register when you, you can put a number, and the number identifies the function. Uh, this is not necessarily the case. Uh, some other angels are, are weird <laughs> and you can have a group uh, selection, for example, and you, you select the function, and when you select the function, all the pad of uh, the function will, will trigger. So it's not always the case. And um, you can have, uh, we'll, for example, uh, pads of what, uh, that are only GPIO with, with only one function, uh, pads without GPIO with only functions. Um, function can that select all pads at one time, or for example, uh, one one bit to select uh, uh, multiple pad for a function. So it's, uh, all these must be must be handled in, uh, in in software. So the so software level, uh, what what uh, did we have uh, ten or 12, 12, 12 years ago? So it was anarchy, complete anarchy. Um, the ARM SOC were not really. Um, or as you say, uh, majority in uh, Linux code base. So you had uh, every vendor uh, was really disparate. You didn't have the same support, for example. Uh, you had uh, for some associates, like uh, some some um, router uh, associate or some simpler one, you had really a simple hard coded pin setup, like a single function, like you say, uh, set this pin to this function, really basic. Uh, to, to some really complex framework, for example, in the Samsung SOC support or ETI. 
with a really complex uh, conflict checking uh, uh, um, code. And what we learned to, uh, of that is uh, uh, check checking the con the conflict, actively checking the conflict is really complex, and and you cannot check it. It's too complex. Like for example. Uh, um, you will need uh, really to descri describe the, a lot of hardware to, to, to know what combination of pin is possible or not. And in fact, it's useless because uh, if you do a, do a code, good code review of the board support and testing, and uh, you implement a simple check, it's enough. Yeah. Uh, we need the dynamic setup, for example, for, for low power device. When you go to uh, suspend, for example, or runtime suspend, or sometimes like for complex uh, buses like uh, SDIO or uh, NMC, you need to be to switch the, the the pin config at runtime for specific modes, and we don't want hard coding of uh, board setup at all. So uh, this is why uh, DevS3 uh, is here uh, because it's what like here. So GPIO API was also energy. It was older than uh, pin control. And it was even worse. You didn't have uh, a, a single uh, GPIO.h in each uh, board or architecture support. You have you had a different uh, GPIO header. So <laughs> potentially you, you had a different API, different implementation, different types, different behavior. So it was uh, completely. Uh, since the API was, was too basic, uh, every implementation was different. Uh, you couldn't handle multiple GPIO controllers. It was really complex. You impossible to handle uh, nested uh, controllers like uh, I2C controllers, uh, SPI controllers, extenders. And only some SOCs had uh, advanced API with uh, runtime CMPM support uh, and so on. And uh, GPIO RQ was uh, too simple and too, too SOC specific. So first of all, what, uh, how did it change uh, in the with the pin control framework? So it was like uh, ten years ago, in fact, uh, nearly uh, nearly ten years ago. It was merged and merged in uh, Linux uh, 3.2. So it created the Linux pin control subsystem to handle pin control devices. Uh, so, um, like I said uh, in the other part, it controls different aspects of package pins. So, um, the main goal was to remove all the sparse, uh, the, the different ARM Arch implementation um, and uh, simplify everything to have a simple code base to implement the, sa implement the same, same thing in the same, same manner. So, thanks Linus. Welsh for your work uh, and still because you're still maintaining the pin control. So uh, the pin controller, it was split in different, uh, the pin controller, the, the pin mixing, the pin control. So the pin controller uh, describes the hardware that control pins, uh, is that you can multiplex, uh, bias, load capacitance, drive times for individual pins or group of pins. So, like you see, it's defined. It's, it's, it was uh, defined for to cover all the possible use cases you find on the field. So, what is a pin? Like I said, uh, in the hardware description, it's you can call it a pad, a finger, a ball, or whatever. Whatever goes out of the package, and you can control. Okay. Um, so. Instead, instead of using the same GPIO uh, architecture where you have a, a single number across every controller, no, you have a single a number space in each controller. So there is no no every pin won't have a single uh, ID. You will have the pin controller uh, handle and an ID in the controller. So it simplifies a lot the architecture because you can have a lot of pin controllers. Not not only the SOC pin controllers, you can have multiple pin controllers and SOC, and you can have external pin controllers. Like for example, a GPO extender, some of them can can be pin controllers. They can offer some features on some, on some pin. And one important, 
the the pin space is not it, it maybe can make have gaps in the in the space because when you have uh, for example a QFP package uh, from one to uh, 63 not all pins are controllable you can have some voltage pin or you can have some analog pins and uh, ground pins so you, you must cover you might make sure if you have gaps uh, it's quite ended. So some controllers uh, only work with group of pins, so uh, is the correct part to to, uh, to handle. And um, finally, the pin mixing, which uh, was in the, the main part of the framework, is selecting alternate functions or some some hardware called the mixing mode. Um, which permits to 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 select uh, functions on each pins. And a great uh, feature of the framework is this, this can be changed at runtime actually. So how uh, how uh, the pins are described in the framework? Um, you will see on the left you can have a list of pins or like a uh, higher. Uh, I use the two uh, uh, a letter and number, for example. So you can uh, can have the A pins, the B pins, the G pins. Uh, not they're not uh, complete, so you can have holes in it. Um, you will define pin groups for, uh, for example, I 2 C or UART. Every function groups, um, and for example, you can have multiple fun function groups. Uh, for similar, for, for example, uh, you can have, have a, a variant of UART, UART with div, uh, different group. For, for example, UART one can be uh, can be uh, routed to multiple different group of pins. So uh, you can handle this. For example, I, I, here I, I, uh, I defined uh, four groups: one for I 2 C, uh, one for UART, and the RTS and CTS pins on different groups. Because, for example, these are optional. And uh, in the function list, uh, I said, okay, I2C0 uh, only has one group, but UART1 can have three groups. UART1, UART1 RTS, and UART1 CTS, because the three of them can be set, but only one. You can, you can choose which groups of uh, function can be set uh, at runtime. So yeah, so instead of to have a, 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 a kernel-wide number, you have a controller-wide number and names associated to everything, two pins, two groups, and two functions. Um, it's simpler to associate everything via names than numbers. So um, a name must be unique. Uh, for pin groups, you can have uh, multiple pins, one or more. For functions, you can have multiple pin groups, and uh, the, the 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 conflict checking is uh, here. Is uh, the core we will we will store uh, what are the functions set for each pin or for groups. So if you set a conflicting uh, group, for example, it will be detected. So it's the simplest way to detect a conflict. Uh, the, the only thing it doesn't detect is when you set a function on a pin before Linux. Uh, the core doesn't handle, uh, cannot load the state of the current pins. It's only limitation. So, um, the, the framework uh, is pretty simple, for example. Uh, uh, you have uh, three three structures to uh, to fill. First of all, the the pin the pin list. It's only a table of a pin control pin desk, which uh, has uh, the name inside. Uh, and three uh, ops ops. So the pin control, pin mixing, and pin config. The the pin control is pretty simple because it's uh, it's uh, only callbacks. You can uh, you can really define your own uh, you can define your own table uh, that really match the hardware, and uh, you will need to implement the callbacks 
to give the framework what you need. So the number of groups, the, number, the name of the groups, the, and the pin names on, of uh, each, uh, each uh, groups. So it's much simpler than feeding, uh, feeding him uh, uh, tables. So you, you can compute, in fact, in these functions. So you can really describe the hardware uh, like the vendor uh, does. And in these, these functions, you can compute and give to the framework uh, some processed information. So this is for the, uh, the, the groups. And same for the function. The function with which associates uh, the different groups to a function. So you have the, the count, the name, uh, which groups, and the final call uh, simply sets a function in a group. Well, a group in a function. So it's the set mux is the, is the, the main call, in fact. Uh, when uh, the, all the calls have, have been called by the core, uh, and when the, the SOC support and the driver uh, probes, uh, the driver will ask to set the default uh, pin, uh, pin, pin mux, and uh, the core will, will process all the, the data and uh, call set mux to set a, a function on, uh, on different groups. So it was designed before the device tree, but but finally, uh, even it was uh, it was before uh, the mapping in DT works very really well, and the usage doesn't change at all. In fact, uh, it's, it's the same way to uh, to uh, to set uh, a pin control. So the the code I list here, so the pin control get lookup state and select state, uh, now is called by the core. So when you probe a device. Automatically, automatically, this will be done. In fact, under the hood, so you don't don't need to do anything to set up pin control. Only set the the, the right uh, um, properties in DT or SDPI to actually uh, d d d define what are the needed groups and function for the particular device, and it will be done by, def by default. So initially, it will uh, set the init or default state, but uh, you can have some special uh, power management state, in fact, uh, which are here to handle all the runtime PM states uh, to lower uh, consumption. So here is the DT, the, the way the D, how it's D, defined in DT. So the first uh, node is a sub node of the pin controller on node. So for example, for, for the pins I defined uh, earlier, if you want to define the UART one pins, uh, you simply need to have a, a, a node, a sub node of, of this one. You can have sub multiple node. Here I have a, sim, a single mux. Sub node, but in a single uh, in in a DT mapping node, you can have you can set up a lot of different groups and functions. Here I only set one, for example. Uh, I'll, I uh, I uh, I set the three groups: so you have one, you have one set RTS, and you have one CTS. And I said uh, I say this this should be to the reward function. Because groups can be in multiple functions. So here it's in one function, but I could have uh, set different groups in a different function. So and in the in the in the, the device node of the UART controller, for example, you simply uh, put a, a p handle uh, to the UART one DT mapping in the default uh, node uh, name and automatically at the probe uh, the UART one pin will be, will be set. This is uh, like magic but uh, it's work way 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 well. So now uh, comes to the GPIO framework. So the GPIO framework uh, is here to handle the general purpose IO. So the, it's, uh, the specific function of pins that can be controlled by uh, software. So you can set in, at input mode, output one and zero, and other 
optional features. So the deep I/O provider infrastructure, which uh, defines a, a single uh, deep I/O dot H, H was submitted in uh, 2008, so for 2625. So it provides a, an infrastructure uh, that that uh, that that make a single programming interface. So the, the this programming interface. Uh, is still almost valid today uh, because uh, it defined an in, uh, finally an unified API and implementation. So it was named JPIO Lib. So it was more designed like a library than a, a modern framework. Every JPIO on the system, so on the board, not only the SOC but on the, on the, also on external. Uh, JPIO controllers, uh, you had a unique, an unique uh, kernel wide uh, number uh, for each JPIO. So uh, you need to to hack to know what was the right uh, JPIO number to be used by driver. So it was okay in uh, 2008 when you had like uh, 20 uh, JPIOs, but uh, in nowadays as we see, like the Tegra ones, when you can have, uh, we can have uh, 200 GPIOs uh, in uh, 20 controllers. It's much more complex, and uh, it's it it will be nearly uh, unimplementable uh, at, at the time. So the stacking numbering was really made it really limited. So it was uh, replaced in the time by uh, the new implementation uh, called GPIO D. So GPIO D. Um, it's, uh, it's named like this for GPIO descriptor. Uh, it was the, it was, um, uh, the, this new, uh, framework, uh, use a descriptor for each, each GPIO pin, in fact, instead of, uh, you still have an unique number, but this unique number is not the, the, the main, uh, processing, uh, uh, um, Uh, component of, of the framework. The framework works with a GPIO desk. So you can have a, a, a corresponding correspondence with, between a number and a GPIO desk. But internally, it uses only GPIO desk. So the consumer now only knows GPIO desk, for example, and not a number. But you still have uh, compatibility with the legacy, legacy interface with numbers. Uh, but it's not the main uh, the main ID that drives the framework anymore. So you can still use the uh, use the lega legacy API, even if uh, uh, Linux Village removes uh, some feature uh, at every release. Uh, but now you have a, a directory with, for example, consumer.h, which are designed only for drivers. So drivers should only use consumer.h. Which is the same as a pin control, in fact. Pin control has, has the same split between the consumer functions and the driver and system functions. So, um, you, uh, you have driver.h that is, is only for GPIO controller drivers and consumer.h, which are for the consumers, for the other drivers, they need GPIOs to, um, To, uh, to make all the feature for, for them, driver, driver .h. Uh, here's an example how to how you register a new controller. So basically, uh, it will need uh, a name, for example. But the main uh, callbacks of the controller are uh, direction output, get, and set. With these three functions, you have the, the main uh, callbacks of the controller. So uh, the core we call will call direction output output when uh, an input when an output mode is requested. Get value when when uh, the driver or the consumer want, wants to get the actual value on the on the pad and set to set an output value. And the other are base. Base uh, is a, a legacy because in the time when you didn't, didn't have a, a proper framework, 
you need to, to say at which what, what was the start number of your controller. Uh, for example, for the main controller it was zero, for the external controller it was 100, and 400, and so on. Uh, with the new uh, framework, you can still uh, set your base for legacy implementations, but for, for new modern implementations, you set minus one, saying uh, put me anywhere because the we don't need to have a, a fixed number for uh, GPIOs. And number GPIO for to say what are what are the number of GPIOs on the system. And finally, GPIO chip add data, which will which will uh, will register the, the device to the framework. On the other side, uh, you have the consumer dot H, uh, H, and I will only show how it's uh, uh, linked with device tree, but with ICPI is globally the same but for ICPI. So for example, uh, let's uh, look to a simple audio amplifier, which is the, the most basic uh, node, which only has a GPIO uh, to enable the amplifier. So if you look at the, at the node, you have uh, first of all the name of the attribute, which is, which is enable GPIOs. So the enable is the function name uh, of the GPIO, uh, and you can have multiple GPIO. Uh, for example, uh, the most uh, the most uh, used names so are reset GPIOs, Justin GPIOs. But you need to respect the function name GPIO, GPIO with S. This is the new bindings you must use. And in the attribute, you have, for for this example. First of all, the p handle of the GPIO controller. Secondly, a number that defines the offset or the, it is completely controller or platform specific. Here it's for MLogic associ, so we have a, a DT bindings header that defines this one. But for example, some, from some, with some very really complex associs, we have a macro where you can you set the which uh, bank and which position on the on the uh, on the package uh, you have the the, uh, the pin and finally the, the third one is the uh, gpio flags so what are gpio flags so the gpio flags uh, they express what are the characteristics of the gpio on on the system and on the um, how it's interconnected on the the board. For example, uh, the bit zero will express what is the actual polarity of the PGPIO uh, when uh, when uh, the at at each uh, which level the uh, the function is active. For example, uh, for reset, often you it will be active low. So uh, for reset, active low. For enable, for example, enable, you, it's active high. So you put active high. And you have other defines for push-pull, which, which is default. Uh, open source, open drain, like we saw on, on the hardware the description. Uh, you have um, an other specific option for suspend resume and uh, pull up, pull down. Pull up, pull downs can be set either in GPIO. Often, it's done in the pin controller. In fact, so on the consumer side, uh, the driver only need to do two calls to to use uh, a GPIO. So, for example, uh, simply uh, GPIO do get, GPIO do get with the name of the GPIO, like here enable the name of the function, and an optional flag. Uh, which, say, which says how the GPIO must be initialized. Uh, initialized. So here we need we want the enable, but we want it to be uh, default to low. So for example, we don't we want it to be disabled as probe of the device, and later we will set the value. So set value zero or one. So the DT flags uh, will invert automatically the the polarity. For example. So uh, if you set uh, GPIO active low, for example, 
and you do uh, GPIO set one, the the framework will set to the GPIO to zero. In fact. So um, this must be taken in account when you write the uh, the DDB links and the driver. You you must know how you want the the GPIO to be defined. As you, you want to, the the active polarity to be taken in account or no. So, for example, for active low, if you put pass zero to set value, it will be set to set one and zero in the reverse. So, the term of relationship in with pin, pin control and GPIO, pin control was designed to to take in account uh, GPIO. In fact, you can link the pin controller to the GPIO controller because, in fact, uh, in some uh, SOCs. You, you, you have a, a common hardware for pin controlling and GPIO. So, um, often you will need to, we need that we have a single driver, in fact, for both. It's not a problem. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, designed like that. So, and on other design, you have a, you have a different IP for pin control and uh, GPIO. So you can specify what ranges uh, of pin controller are handled by the GPIO controller. So, for example, you can have a single pin controller for the whole SOC, but different GPIO controllers, for example. And uh, in DT or in the, the driver, you can say, okay, pin 0 to 10, it's this is the GPIO controller, pin 11 to 20, this GPIO controller. So everything, go, it will go through the pin controller uh, uh, API and, uh, and, um, and um, when you request uh, a GPIO, for example, it will it will request the mode uh, the GPIO mode in the pin controller. This is really handy, in fact. So uh, thank you for listening for this introduction. Uh, you can uh, scan uh, the QR code for the slides, and uh, I'll be happy to answer to all your questions uh, in the chat.